Is this recording? It is recording, so we are rolling. Good oh, buddy. You All right. Me. You look ridiculous. Are you serious? What? <laughs> you did that on purpose. <laughs> It's a, I, it's I know a it's a Mulligan jersey. jersey, I know, but the, but if Mulligan I'm has just, just, 11 different jerseys. I'm wearing a Devito, no I'm not. Sorry. You buddy. wouldn't wear one. I would, if you gave me a jersey, you, I would wear it. Jackson, Jackson secretly does not like me. No, it's not a secret. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Have, you, have you seen his Instagram burners? Like, <laughs> he's talking all Devito's kinds the of worst. <laughs> DeVito not funny. Oh. You know who wouldn't have made that tackle on Derrick Henry? Mike DeVito. My, and it's true. That's true. Hot in the know. streets. Mike DeVito against Derrick Henry. You know I love the you, brother. Other, and, you know I love you. Well, I love you, brother. I hope you do. Sometimes I want no. Jeez. Welcome to Three Point Stance, the video version. Got our casting couch. Look at this thing. This, this is, is beautiful. Be this is cozy. It really, like, is. it really is. It's like there's room for three large men this here is on this couch. Fantastic couch. We are very large men. We ordered t-shirts today. Stone Cold Kansas City t-shirts. Uh, brand new today. We sized up all the boys and Jackson was the smallest. At a triple XL. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a T-bone stick. Once upon a time, baby. So, Mike, before we go to days. the championship games, I want to talk to you about what happened with this Kansas City Chiefs team. Because I was, so I was watching it, right? Yeah. And it becomes, I think, at one point it was, what, 24 to... Nothing, I think. Yeah. And I think to myself, okay, I was watching this game at my dad's house. I'm going to go home. I got some stuff I got to do at home. So I leave. I get to my house. Now, we live about three miles apart. I turn on my TV to put it in the background thinking I'll just watch it in case it gets close again. And it was like 24, 21. Right. What happened? Is it, you know, when I think of the past two playoff games with the Chiefs, right? So there's no, there's no question that I'm a Chiefs fan, right? Love the guys over there. Love everybody. Would never have guessed that. No, right. Hey, yeah, I'm right. not a Titans fan for the record. You are. Like, I want that. No. <laughs> you are. I'm a Matt Mulligan guy. But the past two playoff games have made me question watching football. Like last year, I, I, I said to myself after the AFC Championship game where, where KC lost to New England, uh, right at the last second, I said, I'm done. Either I'm going back to coaching or playing or I'm not watching this because I can't take the stretch. There's not enough Xanax in the house to handle this. And then same thing this week. Right? I mean, 24 nothing in the playoffs. You guys don't understand. Well, you probably do. But it, it's hard to come back 24 or nothing anytime. But in the playoffs, it's damn near impossible. I mean, you saw New England do it in the Super Bowl, you know, a couple of years ago. Right. But outside of that, I mean, it's just you get a, happen. You get a ten point lead in the playoffs. You say, okay, that's it. It's over. I mean, it's just such a hard time to come back from a deficit. What they did is is just incredible. I mean, one of the greatest comebacks of all time, and it speaks to the poise of that team, the leadership of that team. Uh, I sent a tweet out afterwards, but it able the only way you can come back from a deficit that much uh, is to have great leaders at each position, right? So you know you have Pat Mahomes, you know you have the Honey Badger in the back end, but uh, you need it across the board because guys start to panic. 24 or nothing, guys are already thinking about getting on the bus. How could they not around. be panicking? Right, but it, it takes incredible leadership to talk, talk about the maturity of a team to be able to come out of that deficit. Um, and you really saw that. Now, the thing that Kansas City does have that makes them you know, always a weapon is they have, incre I mean, they have incredible talent across the board. Right, so we know defensively they're incredible time, but on offense, they have star power all over the place. And you saw that. I mean, it took, took them two minutes to score three touchdowns. Um, so they, they have the capability to do that as well. Uh, but that aside, it still takes a, a lot of poise, and it, it speaks to the maturity in that locker room because, again, I know a lot of teams with a lot of talent that would not have been able to overcome that uh, deficit. So it really was impressive, and uh, it solidifies my – confidence in them. Prior to this game, I obviously had a ton of confidence in Kansas City. Take them as a Super Bowl favorite. Now, it's it's beyond a doubt for me because the, the type of locker room that you need to do what you did, what they did last Sunday, um, is just, you know, I just know they have the, the makeup, both star power and talent and leadership, toughness, grit uh, to, to, to go all the way. Do you know who didn't panic? Who? This guy. Come on. 3.57 p.m., 3 o'clock kickoff. It's 21 nothing Houston. And I tweeted out, this already feels like the 92 wild card game where the Bills overcame a 30-point deficit and beat the Houston Oilers. Right, 92. It, 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 well, it just felt like the same sort of thing. I remember thing. that one. You have Warren Moon. Yeah, yeah it, Warren it's, it's an iconic right. game. Frank Wright comes in, Jim Kelly gets hurt. Right. And they come back and they win the game. They obviously go on a run to the Super Bowl. Right. And it, 
just things felt familiar. You have Arrowhead's rocking. Now they're silent, but you have this offense on the other side. You know, and in 92, it's Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas and Andre right. Reed, and it's just a stacked team that should be able to put up points. And in this case, it was Pat Mahomes. I mean, we saw how quickly they put up 51. Right. And I tweeted that out. I tweeted a gif of, of Frank Wright in that epic comeback. And it feels the same because Houston, and it's funny that it's Houston, an ironic way that 30 years later in a franchise change and you know, a totally different organization, it still felt like, you know, it feels familiar. Warren Moon, Deshaun Watson, great receivers. They jumped out early, a little bit fluky. And I go, this isn't sustainable. And, and not only that, they're not a team that's capable of just holding on and right. incubating that lead that's and point. bleeding the clock. Because when it was 24 to nothing, or 21, there's still two minutes left in the first quarter. A lot of it, time. it almost yeah. happened too quickly. That's right. And yeah. if we can go back, Jackson, you stopped watching a playoff game? I like, what is like the matter five with five minutes? To I go mean, home? you know, on, I mean, you're not. I went from a, point A to point B. It was three you're, miles. You're not wearing a jersey. We, I mean, Before we even get onto that, though, '92, I was eight. I was thinking about le- like I don't know. I don't remember any feelings from that. I, how do you remember your feelings from '92 about a play- you were watching playoff games? I was, was playing six. Lego. No wait, no. No, yeah, so, all right, so it was January of 93, but it's the 92 wildcard play. Oh. Yeah, I, was, I remember watching that game. You're an anomaly. That's why I'm It's saying. ridiculous. You're, you're great at this. That's incredible. So, Mike, you said that you had some confidence. I'll be honest. I said on this very area last week that if Kansas City were playing Tennessee, I would pick Tennessee. I thought I had more confidence in Tennessee than I did Kansas City, given Derek Henry. I think a lot of people game. do. So that, now that said, what I saw from the Chiefs, I, I'm completely flip-flopping this thing. Mm-hmm. I now have a ton of confidence in the Chiefs. I think Pat Mahomes is back, which is the opposite of what I said last week. So going into this game, Tennessee, Kansas City, I'm not just saying this because the bigger of the two of you is sitting close to me to the KC gear. I like the Chiefs. Yeah, I, I feel like they can jump out to an early lead, and then all of a sudden Tennessee unravels in a hurry because Ryan Tannehill is not capable of leading a comeback. I mean, that's what happens when you don't watch 55 minutes of a playoff Yeah, game. that's right. You know, your opinions are just skewed up. Oh, I'm going to jump on. Whichever way the wind is blowing, Jackson. But I do agree with them. And when you look at this game, you talk about Tennessee and their run game, and it's, it's incredible. I mean, Derrick Henry is really a special talent. And the one thing that makes him so potent is he doesn't just run kind of the downhill – Runs that you would expect from a big back. But so like help that. me God if he gets downhill. Oh, like, forget I know it. he doesn't. But oh my God. when he gets downhill, it is you know that's that's. Yeah. But he can also run outside zone and inside zone, right? I mean, this is a guy who's patient, can make the cuts. I can tell you as a defensive player, that is incredibly difficult to plan for. You know, when you're going against a guy like Adrian Peterson, you know, okay, when he's in there, in between the tackles, power, ISO, things like that, and Tennessee has the ability to do that. But you can't just hone in on on kind of your gap scheme downhill runs. You're going to get these zone scheme runs where they're you know where he's making cuts and hitting it backside, and so just a really really special player. Definitely going to be a challenge for Kansas City up front. Hopefully, you have Chris Jones back in the lineup again. Though at the end of the day, with how explosive they are on offense, I don't care how long you run the football. I don't care how you know much time of possession you have. They can't score with they, You have to score points to be Kansas City, and I just don't see them having the firepower to do it, even if they milk the clock and let, you know, let their carry run the football. Now, I will say this. Being on a defense and being on a team, when another team is running the football on you, it does take the wind out of your sails. There's something about running the football that's just kind of it's those gut punches, right? It's those jabs, it's those those hits that just start to wear you down over and over. And so it makes your defense tired and it kind of takes the air out of the sidelines. So you do worry about the emotional game and just them continuing to run the football and, and eat up the time of possession. But with Patrick Mahomes and how poised he is and his ability to rile that team up no matter what's going on, I just see them, I just can't see a way this plays out where Tennessee wins. He's going to tell us how it happens. For Tennessee to win, you mentioned controlling the clock. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to continue to make plays on defense. And if they're going to have any success against Casey, they have to try to slow him down. We saw against Lamar Jackson, it was almost imperceptible how they got him out of rhythm. They took him out to where they didn't want to go. Jackson, we talked last week, you had to take the Ravens to some place they were uncomfortable and some place they hadn't been. Yep. They've won 12 straight games. They're coming off a bye. They hadn't really trailed anybody in several months. They lose Mark Ingram. That was a big key out of the middle. 
I need to see how Tennessee is going to make plays on defense. They need to force, I'm going to say, at least two turnovers in this game. And they need to disrupt. I, I think the key to the offense, not so much Patrick Mahomes, I think they need to disrupt Travis Kelsey. We saw a huge game from him against Houston. They couldn't slow him down. It was back to the Travis Kelsey that we've all come to, you know, I don't say no one love, but, you know, expect the last couple of years. And when he's running wild, that's when Pat Mahomes is most dangerous because he can make the plays. He always knows Kelsey's going to be there as a stopgap. I mean, it wasn't Tyreek Hill. It wasn't the deep downfield passing game that really uh, undid the Texans. It was plays breaking down, plays breaking down. I mean, Pat Mahomes, it was really over-pursuit. Right. He ran circles around J.J. Watt, who just pinned his ears back, flew off the edge, and then Mahomes would just jump up through a, a seam in the pocket. Right. And then he's running free, and the guys were nowhere near him. I right. mean, we saw Whitney Mercer slamming his helmet down, and, and I, I totally get it. They were completely confounded by Mahomes. But it was because he could run around out there and know, I can either tuck this and run, or I can dump it to Travis Kelsey, and we'll take a chunk play any way we can get it. Right. It didn't have to be deep downfield. And that goes back to discipline, I would assume, Mike, in a game plan of not letting him sneak out of the pocket instead of just running at him full speed like a wild animal, maybe taking the time to take a step back and think, where's the lane he's going to try to go to and beat him there? Yeah, I mean, I don't, and even that, I mean, he, he's like Lamar Jackson in that sense. Now, they did a good job against the Ravens and keeping Lamar Jackson in check, but he's he's like Lamar in the sense that even when you are gap discipline, um, it's still hard to keep him contained. I mean, Pat Mahomes just finds a way to sneak out. Real quick, talking about J.J. Watt, shout out to Mitchell Schwartz, our, our former podcast guest, because um, he did an incredible job shutting down J.J. Watt. I think he might be the most underrated player in the NFL. What he does is just on every week, whether it's Vaughn Miller, J.J. Watt, whatever pro, perennial all-pro you want to put outside there, when they play Kansas City, they're just quiet because Mitchell Schwartz does an incredible job at right tackle. So shout out to him. Now, Kansas City is going to be dealing with a better defense than they faced in a while. I mean, if you look at the past, I don't know, six or seven teams, New England is up there as one of their better defenses. Um, but, oh, I'm sorry, but Kansas City's going to be playing against a better defense than they played in a while. Right. New England's up there. But outside of that, you know, Tennessee's much better than Houston was and a lot of these other teams that Kansas City's played recently. So they're going to have a, a, a bigger test, a better test. Obviously, Jarrell Kel- uh, Casey up front. And no tackle. He's a force. They're going to have to handle him. Um, but again, I still think at the end of the day, they, they pull it up. On the NFC side of things, Green Bay, San Francisco. I keep saying Green Bay is fraudulent. They keep winning games despite it. I still don't like the way they're winning games. And I feel like Seattle, if they weren't just absolutely beat up beyond belief, would have won that game. Either of you willing to take the other side and say that Green Bay is going to win this thing? Because I just feel like San Fran should and will win this game fairly easily. I feel like we talk about the three teams that are in it, right? You talk a lot about Tennessee. You talk a lot about Kansas City. You hear a lot about the Niners. I almost forget that Green Bay is even in... Which the- Aaron Rodgers loves. He said, I love being under the radar right now. Right. But I think it's for a reason. And I just, when you watch them, they don't pass the eye test. They just don't look like a complete cohesive team capable of a Super Bowl. I just don't see it. It's the same thing kind of every year. It's a new coach. It's a new system. You saw a lot of Aaron Jones who had a great year during the season, somehow didn't make the Pro Bowl. I don't know what I like about it. I like the Smith brothers on defense. I mean, Sandaria Smith had a great game last week. Preston Smith, though they lost an injury, he comes back with a big sack on Russell Wilson. Like, there's a couple of parts of pieces. Mike Patton's defense at times looks like a world beater, but then there's times like week 12 when they traveled to Santa Clara and played the 49ers and gave up 37 points, only put up eight. I mean, like that's such a huge red flag when you have a regular season game, you know, the latter stages of the season. This is week 12. This isn't a September or early October anomaly. We're talking end of November, and San Francisco just put it on him. I, mm-hmm. I want to know what changes. The only way I, I think San Francisco falls in this game is if Jimmy G just has a clunker. Mm-hmm. If he goes out, throws a couple of picks, a couple of turnovers, and that defense, which we've seen, the San Francisco defense is not invincible. They get after the quarterback well. They apply pressure. I think Rodgers does his work cut out for him in that way, trying to keep Bosa and Armstead. And, I mean, there's such a different defense with Quan Alexander out on the field. I think San Francisco's defense really dictates what Green Bay can do. I think Green Bay's defense will play okay, but I think San Francisco's defense dictates what happens. I just don't see the Packers scoring with the Niners on the road in San Fran. I think it's a very... Uh, 
monochromatic Super Bowl. I think we got a lot of red and gold, red and yellow heading out of Miami. Um, I like it. I think when you look, when you get into this time of the year, it's about all three phases playing at a high level. All right, Bill Belichick. Well, that, yeah, well, that is a Bill Belichick ism. Defense, special teams. That's right. But if you're looking at the roster, I think the 49ers would be the team that has the most complete I agree. roster. Absolutely. All. So you talk about Kansas City's weapons. They have great players on offense. We were talking. You know, start to bottom, 53 guys. The 49ers have yep. the best, you know, the best roster. So I, I like them over Green Bay as well. All right. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube for videos like this. That's the AFC NFC Championships. Pro Bowl, it's not. Uh, we were worried last week. We thought maybe you could bring us down because it was Hawaii. It turns out it's not in Hawaii. So you're off the hook. Where is it this year? In Miami? Yeah. Where is it Scranton? Scram, yeah, you never know. So, we, we don't care about Miami. If it was in Hawaii, we were going to make you bring maybe, us. Well, okay, maybe when, that, when we get out back out to Hawaii, we're taking three-point stance to Hawaii. Yes. We're interview the guys. That'll be fun.